Volume! Hi. Hands up who here's been loomered? Anyone been loomered? You've been loomered. What? This is Milo dressed up as what? Laura Loomer. Do you want it? I am the world's first citizen journalist. Nobody did it before me. Which I never get any credit for. I was the first person to reveal that Omar, Ilhan Omar, married a shoe. Now everyone's saying it. No one gives me credit. Everyone plagiarizes me. Like yesterday, people were saying, Oh, it's Friday today. Yeah, I said that seven days ago. Now everyone is plagiarizing me. Can you believe that Salman Rushdie guy, the author? He's out there like he's the first guy with a fatwa, like Ayatollah Khomeini didn't shadow ban me first. I don't understand why President Trump doesn't stick up for Jews. It's Holocaust Remembrance Day and I'm like literally in a gulag. I'm in Auschwitz and I've been gassed to death and Mark Zuckerberg did it. I'm really hot. Oh, thank you. I'm really hot, which the left will never tell you because they're hateful. <laughs> Cheryl Sandberg, if you're listening to this, I bought your book when I was 18 years old, when I was in college, and you said women were always going to face obstacles. You said lean in. Well, I'm here, Cheryl. I'm leaning in. <laughs> I'm the most banned person in the world. I told you that, right? No one's been banned as much as me. I've been banned from Uber and Lyft. I couldn't even get here today. I had to hitchhike, and 50 people drove past, banning me from their cars. This morning I was banned from the hotel buffet because I was an hour late. And then I went to get a bagel and forgot my wallet, and the guy in the bakery literally banned me from breakfast. That's how bad it is out there, you guys. I've been banned from my bathroom in my own apartment. I've even banned from this speech, which is why I'm being represented today by a homosexual in a cheap wig. <laughs> oh, it's exhausting, I can't keep that up. Hello, everybody! <laughs> welcome, welcome to White History Month. I'm just kidding, just kidding. Every month is White History Month because of racism. Now, who's looking forward to straight pride? Anyone looking forward to straight pride? I'm going, I'm going as Harvey Weinstein. Now straight people have a lot of things to be proud of. Laura, Tiffany Trump. So looking forward to that, yes, Tiffany, not the other one. Before I start though, I'd like to take a moment, I'd like to share with you please a moment of silence to reflect on the awful tragedy this week of massive earthquakes in California which some very mean people are describing as best 4th of July gift ever. It's not funny. 2,500 earthquakes in the last week alone. Stop laughing. 7.1 on the Richter scale, just 100 miles north of Los Angeles. I think we all remember where we were when we heard the news first and thought to ourselves, goodness, how sad. <laughs> And now some apologies uh, from the people who can't be here with us today. Uh, Jack Posobiec, he's a naughty boy who makes up stories about innocent Democrats on the internet. I'm just kidding, there's no such thing as innocent Democrats. Um, no, he is actually here somewhere. There were some rumors that he wouldn't be, but not to worry. We've got baby Posobiec to worry, to, to, to keep us. You know this Twitter account, Jack Posobiec Jr., you should look it up. We use it in my house when we run out of Ipecac. Jacob Wall is here, or as I like to call him, Jack Posobiec with abs. <laughs> Roger Stone couldn't be here. But I'm fine about that because Antifa said he was like the target number one. And so now he's gone, I'm back on top. <laughs> Roger Stone is a very close friend of mine um, and one of my personal heroes. But I admit, admit we have drifted recently. Um, and it's all my own jealousy at fault, I have to, I have to admit. Um, 
Roger's about to fulfill one of my life ambitions before I do, which is a 2 a.m. three-way at Rikers Island. Um, I can't forgive it. Omar Navarro couldn't be with us today. No, he's... He couldn't... He's coming down off a crack binge with another married woman. Poor Omar, or as I like to call him, Jabba the Slut. Never trust fat people. Oh, Marshmallow, I like that one. Anyone who gives the Daily Beast ammunition is too stupid to function and a liability to the movement. But I do want to tell you what he shared with Will Sommer from the Daily Beast about the Proud Boys. And I have to warn you ahead of time, it's very sensitive. It's hurtful. Those of you with sensitive dispositions should sit down, hold somebody close to you. This is cutting stuff. He said, they're disgusting. They're reprehensible. They're a joke of an organization. They should be called the Proud Jokes, not the Proud Boys. Yeah, that was it. Now the story is headlined, Proud Boys Rally Rocked by Sex and Cocaine Allegations. Well, I don't know about you, but I personally am shocked to hear that there was cocaine at a Proud Boys event. <laughs> but seriously, a guy with zero chance of ever getting elected, whose entire life consists of losing to Maxine Waters, is worried about his reputation. Yeah, okay. I remember Omar, drunk off his face, surrounded by piles of cocaine at an event in Las Vegas. Now, I'm not saying he did any himself, but why pick now for this little hissy fit? Silly jabber the slut. Like we don't have pictures. Did I mention, by the way, speaking of the Daily Beast, how ugly Will Sommer's wife is? Is he here? Will, is he here somewhere? Will, I have a question for you, Will. How do you come? Your wife is so ugly that when she was born, the doctor turned around and slapped her mother. Your wife's so ugly, she makes blind people cry. Your wife's so ugly that people break into your house just to close the curtains. Your wife's so ugly, the entire family's registered disabled. Your wife's so ugly, she gets sympathy cards from Leslie Jones. Close to home, that one. Your wife's so ugly, her birth certificate's just a letter from the doctor that says, I'm sorry. Your wife, Will, is so ugly that she made one direction go in literally every other direction. Now, I do have an ethical point here, though, because I know some of you can go a bit too far with these ugly wife jokes. Please don't call women whores. It's misogynistic and it's gross. For instance, I've never said that the female Sommer is a whore. What I said was that she's a hideous, unlovable sack of estrogen and hurt feelings married to a mannish hog. If you're feeling squeamish about all of this, by the way, please grow a pair because there are 400 people a block or two away who want you dead. And the people who give them signals about whom to attack work for places like the Daily Beast. And a few mean jokes about somebody's admittedly repugnant wife are the fucking least these sociopaths deserve. These are the people pointing the way for Antifa... Sorry, my tits are slipping. Um, <laughs> Laura never has this problem. Hers are very perky. Have you noticed how perky... No, look, it's, it's actually a towel, and it's just... It's, it's... Making fun of somebody's wife is the least they deserve. Besides, Will Sommer can take it as anyone who lives around the DuPont circle can tell you. And I'll tell Will the same thing I told Chadwick Moore. Just because you let a few guys come all over you doesn't make you special. Now, Will Sommer keeps calling the Proud Boys a violent organization. Well, Will, if you think they're a violent street gang, if you really think they're a violent street gang, if they were a violent street gang, do you think you'd still be alive? Exactly. Anyway, to happier things, what a lineup we've got today. Nick Munro. Nick Munro used to have a Twitter account. The real Laura, Laura Loomer is here. Actual Laura. Does anyone follow Laura on Telegram? There's a woman on the brink. She's on the edge, guys. I wish Laura all the best in her lawsuits against the social media titans. Now, one of the most difficult things in a lawsuit is assessing what's called damages. That's how bad the stuff they did to you is and what it cost you. Um, the negative effects the other party had on you. Well, I think we can all agree 
that one glance at Laura's telegram and any jury would quickly agree she is indeed damaged. <laughs> Ashton Birdie, the little sex pot. <laughs> Ali Alexander, who recently said the unsayable that Kamala Harris isn't African American. Well, she isn't, and the way that you know what he said was true is that every cable channel spent 48 hours telling you it was a lie. Then again, he is about the most untrustworthy person I've ever seen. Untrustworthy looking. Now, I see lots of Proud Boys here. The Proud Boys have always been a bit too politically correct for my tastes. But I'm glad they're here in DC. I understand there are some flag burners who are a bit less glad the Proud Boys are here. Those flag burners are more difficult to track down today than Christine Blasey Ford. <laughs> Last but not least, Gavin McGuinness. Now the last time I appeared in public at an event like this with Gavin, some of you will remember we ended up necking. And now I have herpes. I've never heard of anybody else on the speaker list, but I'm sure they're all lovely. Um, I meant it nicely. Now I'm here with a message of, of tough love for you because friends tell each other the truth. I'm gonna say something a little risky and unpopular to you now and it's aimed not primarily at the people here but at the people watching because our, our primary audience is, is, is them. Now I salute those of you who have shown up today risking um, your physical safety. There's every chance that somebody will beat the shit out of you on your way home. So well done for showing up and congratulations. But I have something to say to the people watching at home, and it's something that you aren't used to hearing from media personalities whose politics you share. We're losing, and it's your fault. Not the people here, not the people with the mics or the people who've shown up, the brave few who've risked being beaten senseless. It's amazing that any of you showed up. But the people watching at home, the silent majority who support us and vote for Trump but won't say anything or do anything, you have failed us and you failed yourselves the conservative base in this country i have to tell you is lazy cowardly and self-interested and i for one am sick of it we cannot do this without you we three four hundred people cannot save your country for you and i don't want to hear any more excuses like oh republicans have jobs Oh, we've got responsibilities. We can't just protest all day like the lefties. Amen. If you're not prepared to lose anything, you are going to lose everything. Yes. Conservatives and libertarians in this country, tens of millions of them have failed to stand up for those on the front lines. And conservative, sorry, I don't know how women do this. And conservative media is almost as bad. What the fuck happened to Breitbart? And I'm sorry to say, in addition to all of that, that this White House has failed, and this president has failed. I encourage you merely to glance at the guest list for the social media summit. The left must be made to fear you. They have to be afraid. They're afraid of some of the people here, but they're not afraid of those of you at home. Massive, brutal retaliation for the slightest of perceived insults must be the way from now on. When they cost you a dollar, make them pay a hundred. When they tear down your idols, burn down their cathedrals. Why does it matter that you're losing this? Well, it's not about free speech. Free speech is a distraction. Free speech is instrumental. Free speech is always somewhere. It's procedural. It's not a destination. Antifa and the left want the total destruction of our society. They mean it. They want to destroy your families. They want to destroy your educational institutions, destroy your businesses, destroy your historical monuments, tear down everything that indicates what America is and was. Destroy everything that you are proud of as a country. What you should want to do is not just stand up for free speech. Free speech is not enough. It's fine. Yeah, sure. Great. But what you must stand up for is beauty, truth, goodness, joy, virtues, families. Nice nuclear families, not that weird shit you see on ABC. Children growing up with their mother and their father. Art, 
science, creativity, capitalism, and the worship of our creator. These are the things that we ask for free speech for. These are the things we must demand free speech for. If we do not fight, we don't just lose the next election, we lose our souls. Christianity is the basis of civilization in the West, the basis of this country and this, the basis of this culture. It's the yeast in the dough of civilization, as I read this morning, and the left is seeking to strangle it, and they have almost done it. All conservati conservatives ever do is sit around and worry about how not to get hit. But this freedom of speech stuff is not enough either, and just sitting around is not enough. You have to argue substance. So please risk arguing for God. Because God is the real deal. Now we accept President Daddy, imperfect as he is, because unlike our communist friends over in Pershing Park, we're not trying to bring about heaven on earth. We know that's Marxist folly. But we have got to do a better job of the earthly fight. No more defensive games. Now, getting in close is risky. You risk getting hit. But there's something to be lost here that goes way beyond my ability to stand up in public and tell jokes about somebody's wife. As hideous as she is, and she is disgusting. Like something that crawled out of a swamp and wants to lay eggs in your ear canal, you know? And that thing... I can only be serious for so long. And that thing to be lost is your entire way of life. If you're not prepared to fight Antifa, you're not prepared to fight anything you deserve to lose. When you pay nothing, you get nothing. Before I go, I'm going to give you some advice. to how to win at least one front in the, uh, in the culture wars, or the free speech wars online, on the internet. And it is this. The conservative and libertarian base is not going to get all this on their own. They didn't get it when it was me, when it was Gavin, when it was Roger, when it was Laura. They need to have this brought home to them. They need... For the soft conservatives, the safe conservatives, the Vichy conservatives, the collaborators, they need those guys to fall too, until they get the message. They need for the Shapiros and the Candaces, I'm, af I'm afraid to say the Candaces and the Charlies and the Stephen Crowders, they all need to go. It's the only way the conservative base and the donor class and politicians are going to get it. So I ask you today when you leave, go home and report your favorite conservative commentator for hate speech. Please, I mean it. Go onto Twitter, go onto Facebook, report them for hate speech. Get them banned because the movement requires it. It may sound counterintuitive, but it is what we need. It's the only way from the ashes that we can begin to rebuild what we have lost. Our enemy is strong, and they are smug, and they're on the offensive, and they think they have us on the back foot. They think we're on the ropes. Well, they can say what they want, they can do what they want, but they will never win. Because they can't take our joy. They can't take our happiness. They can't take away from us our determination to wrest back our civilization. Thank you very much. I'd like to invite on stage don't applaud me. Implore somebody who deserves it. I'd like to invite on stage my, my very dear friend and a personal hero of mine, the real Laura Luma. <laughs> she, may be, she may be only the second most banned person on the internet, but we love her. Look at this, marry me, Laura. No, 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 I really am the most banned person ever, Milo. I really am. No, I, th I think I am the most banned person on the internet. No, I think I am. I mean, when you leave here today, you'll probably you'll be able to get an Uber. I will. I'm definitely the most I'm, banned person on the internet. <laughs> I'm definitely the most banned person, Milo. <laughs> There's no point fighting with her. She's indefatigable. She is completely inexhaustible. <sighs> Laura Luma, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Milo, for that uh, wonderful introduction. I love you guys too. Thank you so much to all of you guys who came out. There's people who came out from all around the country to be here today. To, yeah, San Francisco, all over the place, right? Uh, to stand up. I love you guys too. To stand up for the single thing that makes this country the greatest country in the world. 
And that's the First Amendment, right? That's the right to free speech. And currently, it's under attack. And that's why we've all gathered here today to fight back and demand free speech. And, you know, Milo, Milo's funny. We all love him. And he uses humor. And that's why we all fell in love with Milo. He uses humor to convey his message. And while it's very funny, you know, his impersonation and his jokes have all made us laugh today, this is far from a joke, right? But humor is the way that a lot of us now deal with this because some of us have had everything taken from us. And the media, the media will tell you that this is just about people who feel like they're being censored on Facebook and Twitter, people who feel like there's discrimination on social media. But I'm here today as a living example and Milo as well to tell you that it has gone much further and the situation at hand is much graver than just a social media ban or social media bias. We are currently living in a country where not only can we as conservative Americans not depend on the GOP establishment to fight back for us, but we are fighting a Democrat party that has aligned itself with full-blown communists and jihadists who are conducting their very own jihad in the back, back, back there to annihilate our free speech rights, to make sure that, quite frankly, we are all sent to what I like to call a digital gulag. And it may seem extreme to you, right? But this is just this is just the first initiative, right? The social media bans, banning people on Facebook, banning people on Instagram, banning people on Twitter, censoring them, sending them to Facebook jail for a few hours to see how far this can go. What American politicians on both sides of the aisle need to wake up and realize, and what President Donald Trump needs to wake up and realize is, is that if he doesn't make tech censorship and social media bias the number one campaign issue in this country, quite frankly, I truly do believe that we will lose our country. You have banking institutions in America that are currently having advisory board meetings deciding whether or not left-wing organizations can come in and tell them whether conservatives can have access to bank accounts. Bank of America is now refusing to do service with companies that are enforcing President Donald Trump's immigration policies. Myself, Joe Biggs, Enrique Tario, Martina Marcota, and several others have been banned by Chase Bank and had our accounts suspended temporarily simply because we're conservative. Not only have I been banned by Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, I've been banned by PayPal, GoFundMe, Venmo, Uber, Lyft, Uber Eats, Medium, Teespring, and I'm sure over time I'll probably be banned by other platforms as well. And a lot of you are probably sitting there thinking to yourself, well, how do you get banned from Uber? How do you get banned from Lyft? How do you get banned from Uber Eats? Just by being and existing as a conservative in this country, right? And so while we're here today to demand free speech, I am here to tell you that this is not just about free speech. This is about civil rights. Not only are, is our free speech under attack, this is a civil rights violation that is taking place against much, most of the country, right? Because most of the country voted for Donald Trump. Despite what the left wants you to think, most of America supports Donald Trump. I know the left is, is depending on the illegal, illegal, illegal alien vote to pull them through this election, but the silent majority, us, all of us who are here today, is who put President Trump in office and he has a duty to stand up and fight for us because his biggest defenders the people who put him in the white house the people who got him elected people like myself people like milo yiannopoulos roger stone gavin mcginnis right alex jones we have all been silenced we have all been silenced and deplatformed and currently before everyone's eyes, even though the media has turned a blind eye and has chosen not to report on this and to act as if we are some sort of neo-Nazi, white supremacist, alt-right fringe group, they don't care to report on the nature of this, which is, it's not just a free speech issue, it's a civil rights issue. And, you know, there ought to be a lot more people here today, there really are, and I applaud all of you guys who came out today because... You know, in the wake of Antifa threatening to throw acid in the faces of attendees, right? People, you see Antifa is, is training overseas with members of ISIS as reported by the FBI, okay? Just last week in Portland, there was a video of members of Antifa chanting Allahu Akbar. This is now the streets of America. Who would have ever thought 10 years ago 
walking down the street of America supporting your president, okay, being a proud American, being a conservative, would sentence you to have acid thrown in your face, to be beaten in the street like conservative journalist Andy No. That is the America we are living in. And if we don't fight back, and if we don't demand that President Trump and politicians, like I said, on both sides of the aisle, because it's despicable that this has now just become a conservative, conservative issue. Free speech in this country isn't just for conservatives. It's not just for Democrats. It's for all Americans. It's, what's, it's what makes us American. The First Amendment of the United States Constitution is the thing that separates this country from every other country on this planet. And we must do everything that we can to protect it. You know? And the struggle really is real, what Milo said when he reminded you all of how the GOP is failing us. Well, you know, when I, when I went to Congress, when Jack Dorsey was testifying, when I had all of my social media accounts still, I stood up and I disrupted the congressional hearing, right? And I called Jack Dorsey a liar because he was committing perjury when he was lying to members of Congress and our taxpayer dollars saying that he doesn't censor and shadow ban conservatives. And I made a personal plea to President Trump and I said, President Trump, please help us before it is too late. Because Jack Dorsey is silencing and censoring and shadow banning conservatives and this is how the Democrats are planning to steal the election. All right, that was almost a year ago. And now I'm permanently banned. And what do you know? Any of you guys seen the latest Project Veritas exposés? Right? Yeah, we love James O'Keefe. I used to work at Project Veritas. You have executives working at Google, executives working at Facebook, executives working at Twitter, openly talking about how they have a plan to make sure that President Donald Trump is not elected again in 2020. What do you think is going to happen to this country if not only if, if, if Republicans don't gain control of the House again, but if we lose the White House? Do you think that the Democrats, do you think that the Democrats who are having their donor meetings with these executives from Facebook, people like Jack Dorsey of Twitter, Mark Zuckerberg and Sheryl Sandberg, and the left-leaning, essentially communist executives at Google, do you think that they're going to be too kind once they get into the White House or once they have total control? What do you think is going to happen if already now with President Trump in the White House, this much censorship and deplatforming is taking place? We're done. We're going to lose our country and we're all going to get sent to the gulag, the digital gulag. And if you think that's an exaggeration, well, you need to wake up and realize that the times we're living in now are the times of Nazi Germany. The Holocaust didn't just begin with Jewish people being sent to the gas chambers and the ovens, okay? The Holocaust began by dehumanizing and ostracizing an entire group of the population, okay? By dehumanizing them and committing acts of financial blacklisting by making lists. You know, the SPLC, CNN, Daily Beast, a lot of these left-wing media operatives, they love to make lists of conservatives, don't they? They love calling us Nazis. They love calling us haters. They love calling us bigots. What do you think that's going to lead to? What do you think it's going to lead to when you have executives at social media companies labeling conservative individuals as dangerous, too dangerous for their platform while they allow for Antifa, ISIS, Muslim Brotherhood, Hamas to have accounts. People need to wake up and realize how serious this situation is, you guys. We are under attack and we must do everything in our power to fight back. And you know, the social media summit, it's on, uh, it's on July 11th at the White House. And you can see the disconnect from the White House and the American people with regards to the issue of tech censorship when you, when you look at the invitee list. There's not a single person on that list who was invited who has been banned or deplatformed. Not a single person. And so, as White House officials and President Trump and other social media personalities gather on that social media summit, I hope they take a moment of silence or some time to really think about those of us who have sacrificed it all. Those of us who have not only lost our social media accounts, but have lost our livelihood. Those of us who are shut down by our bank accounts. Those of us who literally have to travel with bodyguards when we go out public because we face threats of acid attacks and terrorist threats. Terrorist threats. You know, I don't want to talk too much about my own personal situation. A lot of you know what has happened to me. But, you know, in April I filed a lawsuit against Twitter, and that's how I'm fighting back. I'm fighting back with litigation, but it costs a lot of money. 
And not all people can afford that. I can't even afford it, right? I have to have a crowdfund at freelimmer.com to raise a legal defense. But how we can fight back is demanding accountability from our representatives and demanding the president stop big tech censorship and social media bias, a top campaign priority. Because I'm telling you right now, you know, Milo likes to joke about how I'm always saying that I'm right, but I am, right? I, I am. I was I was I was criticized I and lambasted by I'll both the left and the right no, no, when I confronted Dorsey in Congress or when I handcuffed myself to Twitter. People said it was too extreme. But look what is happening. You know, an act of peaceful protest is not extreme. What's extreme is completely deplatforming conservatives simply because they support President Donald Trump and have conservative values. What's extreme is walking outside and being afraid to speak your voice and speak up for America and support your president out of fear of getting attacked by Antifa and having acid thrown in your face. You won't right? get arrested. I so I'm calling hey, on President Donald Trump to, to listen to individuals who really have been platform to hear our struggle to and, to and, and to understand that this isn't just an issue of free speech. It's now a civil rights violation that is taking place against his supporters. And all of you, all of you have a duty right now. A lot of you probably have already been banned and shut down, but if you have it, call your representatives, write letters to the White House, okay? Because you guys are constantly making excuses, like, like Milo has said, I'm too busy, I have a job, you know, protesting is for the left. It's now your duty. If you want to live in a free America, if you want to have free speech, if you want Donald Trump to get reelected, if you don't want to live under communism, then you have a duty to get out in the street and protest. You have a duty to start fighting back. And you have a duty to demand free speech at any cost and all costs whatsoever. So I just want to say thank you again to all of you who came out here today. Thank you. I love you guys too. Thanks. Can we get a Stop the Bias chant going? Stop the bias. Stop the bias. Stop the bias. Stop the bias! 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 You guys need to be chanting that until we get what we want, and that's protection to say what we want and do what we want, and you know to just freely have our First Amendment rights without fear of being attacked. And so, uh, thank you so much. If you would like to uh, continue following my fight against free uh, to, to demand free speech and my fight against the Silicon Valley censors, you can go to freeloomer.com. Uh, I just want to say thank you to all of you who have supported me. I don't get to uh, reply to everybody now that I'm banned, but I truly appreciate all. All of you. I love all of you so much for being here today and for you know supporting everybody who has been banned. It truly means a lot to me. So thank you so much. Thank you. USA, 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 USA. USA, 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 USA. Y'all are beautiful. USA. Laura, Milo, myself, and a host of other speakers want to hang out with you. We're still selling a couple of tickets left at demandfreespeech.org slash VIP, demandfreespeech.org slash VIP. A bunch of us are getting together at a secure place at 7.30, and you can buy your tickets there. You know, I want to comment on somebody in the crowd, and this is kind of off script, but there are frauds and feds in our movement who will do nothing but hold these anti-Jew signs, these Nazi signs, not understanding that the Americans beat the German Nazis. The Americans beat the German Nazis. We are proud patriots. We are black. We are white. We are Hispanic. We are gay. We are bi. We are Jews. USA! 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 We're not, we're not gonna get violent. He has a sign, he wants to use it as a weapon. Wait, wait. What, bitch? Wait, make up. Wait. Don't run up on me, brother. Shut up, bitch.
That's assault. Get out of here. Get out of here. USA! 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 He has every right to speak. He has every right to speak. He has every right. You have every right to speak. Speak the truth. I didn't assault no one. Speak the truth. Speak the truth. You have every right to speak. This is the truth. Joby, go pull the park. This is the truth. This is the truth. Joby, where's your swastika? There are supporters of this rally that donated to Antifa. You don't. They donated to Antifa. They donated to Antifa. They, they didn't donate to the Hire Foundation. They didn't. Dude, they donated to. Sorry, they donated to Antifa. You're a Nazi. You're a racist. You need to yeah, prove it. Prove I'm a Nazi. Because you said you were a Nazi last night. Okay. Okay. So what's wrong with that? Why are you here? Free speech. Free speech. Free speech. Get him out. Let's go. Get him out. Wait, wait, wait. No. Let's go. Free speech. Let's go. Get him out. Not free speech. Not for Nazis. It's not for Nazis. Dude, I'm an American. I was born here. Were you? We saw you guys do the Nazi salute. You okay. You, you're bothered by that? Freedom of expression. I saw you guys beat up somebody that burned a flag. Freedom of expression. That wasn't me. It doesn't matter. You don't beat somebody up because they burned a flag. Are you threatening me now? Yeah. Free speech doesn't exist. Free speech. Free speech doesn't exist. You fucked up in the Free speech. I am MAGA. I want to make America great again. You guys. Let's go! No, you're not! Donald you guys are fakes! Fuck you! you. What are you fuck talking about? He's not a racist! You fuck me! Did you just see what he's doing? Dude, you don't know Donald Trump! You don't know him either, you racist piece of shit! You don't know him! What's wrong with that? It's a part of America! I don't have to fucking agree with you! You guys are okay with the hammer and sickle being thrown all over the country! You are a literal absolute Nazi! You are a Nazi! You are a Nazi! Nazi! You give a voice! You give a voice to the communists, but you won't give it to the Nazis. That makes perfect sense. Did you not know World War II was about Nazis fighting against Americans and Soviets? How dare you tell him he doesn't have a right to show that sign? This is not even anti-Semitic. This is clip the Warhawks' wings. That's all it is. Stop the unbiased. No, start the start. Stop the stop the bias. Stop the bias, start the unbiased. You guys are the biggest hypocrites. This guy here is mentally ill. Watch uh, Stone did you not need to get some help. You need to get help, I agree with that. You need to get help. Something is wrong with you. They said, I hope your babies die. What does this say? That's what they said. What does this say? What does this say? One of the greatest freedoms in America is to burn the American flag on the 4th of July. That is a freedom. Freedom of expression, freedom of speech. That guy had every right to show that sign, but you tell them no. We told him show his sign. He shoved through the crowd. And you guys pushed him away. No, he shoved his legs in the very front. So what? He wasn't going to attack nobody. Yeah, yeah, but you guys are crowding him and pissing on him, like spitting on him. Seriously, you're not for free speech, so stop lying to yourselves. You give free speech to Trump supporters, even communists, but when you think someone's a Nazi, you stay quiet or you push them away. You're all donating to Heather Higher Foundation. Huh? Were you on the speaker list? Are you? I am. Okay. So did you, you here? Did you speak? Did you speak? Okay. Why don't you tell them this? Why don't you tell them this? No, I'm a genius. Yeah, no. I'm a genius. I'm gonna just do like I'm gonna do what Trump does. You are crazy. That's what they said about Trump. That's what they said about Trump. They said that about Trump. They said that about Trump. We doing great. This guy doesn't stand for Trump, it's crazy. Start the unbiased. Start no, the unbiased. No, the How unbiased. are you unbiased if, guess the what? American this is only allowed for Trump supporters. No, you said it's it yourself. Everybody can come speak. So what's everybody? We just tried to invite Antifa. 